to you a little bit of this um, I, Ross Jardine, sitting in the front row, uh, was um, uh, my co-founder at IMAL. We started IMAL together in 1994. And one of the things I learned from Ross is always turn your mic off before you go to the bathroom. There's, <laughs> there's a story behind that that I'll tell you sometime. So, hey, it works, what do you know? I think, does it work? There we go. So you guys just heard, Doc, you even got the same jacket on, I think. I did not, I did not take this picture today. Um, so as you know, Doc has this whole VRM thing, but one of the things that I was, uh, several years, when, when did you write um, the, anyway, Doc, um, wrote a great paper with Dave Weinberger um, called World Events, which about how the internet was useful and important because of the ends of the network, not all the stuff in the middle. In other words, no one cares about the wires and the routers and all of that stuff, right? Um, Craig Burton, who you've also met or at least heard from, in, called this the, the the giant zero. I think it was Craig who said that, right? Anyway, I, I, I like this view of the net as this hollow sphere where it's only the edges that really are important. Uh, everything in the middle is not really very important to what we try to do online. And in fact, if you picture this, every point on the sphere is actually infinitely close together. And so it's really just this singularity point. Now, if there's one image that has maybe defined the internet for the last 15 years, it would be the idea of a land rush. In fact, when Ross and I started IMAL, we actually used that in some of the talks that we did. I was decided that the, the, there's a land rush going on, and you need to get your place online. That's what we were selling. We were selling stores. We were selling online property, right? And in fact, that whole metaphor has been very enduring. Uh, we use addresses to go to sites, right? We think about valuable web properties. That metaphor has been very, very important and enduring and helped a lot of people understand what's going on. That metaphor has also led to a pat formula for online success. And here it is. I'm going to tell you all the secret for how to get rich. What you do is you get, an, get a good address, right? That's the first thing. You build a killer website with great content. You advertise to get traffic. You make the site sticky. You convert that traffic either into sales or eyeballs, depending on how much VC money you've got. And then you just do it over again, right? You just keep doing this over and over again. That is basically defines every company that happened between 1996 and probably 2001. That was pretty much the business model, right? You could just distill it into that. Now, the location metaphor has caused us to focus our attention on service. And we have a lot of great server development tools and a lot of great server-based um, server sites that we go to and, and use online every day. Um, but there are, other, there are other ends in this world of ends that Doc talks about. There's another edge, right? And that other edge has kind of been forgotten. And that's the client. Now, clients are a lot slicker than they were in 1994. And they're, you know, render things better, and yeah, HTML5 is cool, and all of that. But in the end, the browser is pretty much the same thing that it was at least 10 years ago, right? Maybe not 1994. But almost everything that's in the browser now, with the exception of maybe some upgrades like HTML5, you could have done 10 years ago. It was all there. We haven't really changed the browser very much. Now, the focus on, um, the focus on servers, on location, has caused us to create all of these silos, which Doc mentioned in his talk. And it also has caused us to do some things which are a little bit interesting. Um, this is Yahoo. This is not a radio. This is not an RF point, so I have to keep remembering to point it over here. Keep clicking and then nothing changes. Um, and Yahoo is a portal. And if you think about what a portal is supposed to do, it's supposed to bring a bunch of resources from a bunch of places 
and put them all in one place so that the user can have access to them, maybe even in some integrated fashion. Different portals have done better jobs of that than others. We have travel portals, which are trying to do that explicitly around travel. Now, this has kind of gotten out of, line, out of hand. This is the global port this is the portal for the global pet food industry. Um, and, uh, and so people have like varying views of how this all worked, but my case is that the idea of portals was an attempt to solve a problem we should have been solving at the client at the server. Because the only thing we knew how to do was solve it at the server. Now I have a little video here that I'm going to show. Uh, this video is actually an outtake for a project that's being done for the uh, subpar community. I find business opportunities everywhere, man. Yeah. They're constantly bombarded with ideas, like they're falling out of those holes in the ozone layer like, right into my brain. <laughs> Just the other day, I realized that that AAA membership that my step-grandmother's boyfriend keeps buying me for my birthday, Wait, what? it's got discounts in it all over the place. I can actually use them for all sorts of local businesses, and I actually went through and found each local business that offers discounts. Sweet. Check it. I'm with you. You know what I'm going with this. Awesome website. Discount spreadsheets. Wait, I'll what? email them to you monthly for 20 bucks. Really? You'd be stupid not to do it. Wow. Hey, look, I, I guess I'm stupid. I got one right here. You can buy three tires for 120 bucks. Four tires, it doesn't say. Oh, of course not. Candelabras for $15. Ooh, do they have like cakes that. too? Manny Petties for under 20 bucks. You know how I like to take care of myself? Yeah, you could use some hair removal. I mean, it took me a while to tab it up, but I could probably get my cousins to do that for me. I did it while I was on the clock anyway, so no harm, no foul. <laughs> so this is it, right? <laughs> this is it. We've got, we, we've got the ability to create discount spreadsheets and mail them out to people. Now, that's not the idea. But Simon, Simon, and Simon, the IT dummy, you're going to see more of him uh, later. Uh, it's, 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 like I said, this is a project that was done for Subpar Community College to, to help them out a little bit. And Simon is actually in the break room if you want to have your picture taken with him. He'll be there all day. So the question is, how can we do better than this? Right? How can we extend this location metaphor to do something that maybe hasn't been done before? And I submit to you that the metaphor of purpose is a better way to think about what we want to do for people online than the metaphor of location. Nobody goes to websites, right? They don't get online to go to a website. They get online to do something. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. So um, I'm going to show you a demo of um, what Simon, the IT dummy, and his friend were just talking about. So here's Google. And I'm going to do a search for shoes. I mean, it's already up there. And we get all of this stuff, right? And then what I would do is I would grab my phone book. And I'd go look, right, for where I get discounts from AAA. That isn't going to work. No one's going to do that. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to here and turn on this AAA card. We're going to do that same search. And what we're going to see is that Google has been augmented to show us where we get a AAA discount. And it's not just Google. We can go to Bing and search for car rental. And it's hurts on this page. There we are and do the same thing because um, the thing that's interesting to me about this is that everybody knows that you get some kind of discount with AAA at some car rental place, right? But who would think you get a discount at shoes.com, an online retailer? And how are you ever gonna figure that out? Most AAA discounts go unused. And it turns out that the number one determinant whether or not someone renews their AAA card is whether or not they've ever used a discount. And so this is not only serving you, if you have a AAA card, it's also serving AAA because it's helping them increase their membership. Now, the idea there is pretty simple, right? The purpose is I'm going online to find something to buy, and in the meantime, you're going to augment that experience with information that tells me where I get discounts. Let's do a different example. 
And um, this example is finding a book, right? Now, it turns out that 